Hi and welcome back to Bike Speed. So today we're going to service this felt. The customer brought it in because he was saying that it, it didn't feel like it was engaging gears properly when he was changing gear. It seemed to take a few turns of the pedals before it was fully engaging. And I could quickly see, I believe the reason why, as you can see that when you change down, the chain just dropped slack because there was no spring in that rear derailleur. It seized, I mean it hadn't seized solid, but it was sticky, it wasn't flexing. Now also, this brake, as you can hear here, was sticking. So you pull the lever and the brake would engage, but it wouldn't release smoothly. And he said that the steering was a little bit iffy and the headset bearings I could feel are gone. And he also commented that he seemed to be getting a lot of punctures with this bike in recent miles. So we were gonna check the tire out as well to make sure everything was okay there. So initially I measured that chain and the chain is absolutely fine. It's had very little wear. So I can rule that out as the, one of the reasons for it skipping that, you know, I believe it is that rear derailleur. So we'll get everything off here and get it in the ultrasonic cleaner. He'd also asked us to wax his chain, which helps keep the drivetrain in better condition and cleaner anyway, so that's always good practice in my opinion. So we've got a 6 litre ultrasonic cleaner. We put a water-based degreaser in it. If it's just a chain and a cassette, we did those separately. We turn up the temperature in the, in the degreaser, and that seems to, it's a bit like hot water when you're doing the pans and things in the sink. It really cleans those chains and cassettes up. But when we're doing anything that's anodized, especially on the Shimano stuff like these brakes and the derailleurs and everything else that goes in, we turn the temperature down. Otherwise you can run the risk of damaging the anodizing, so we don't want to do that. So here you can see that sticky brake, how it's just, you know, it's not, not releasing smoothly. So we give that a good clean up in the ultrasonic cleaner and you'll see the difference we managed to make to that. And we stripped down the derailleur as well because obviously we've got that pivot point. We actually had an issue with that. Even after we cleaned it up, we couldn't actually get the cage off of the derailleur body itself. It was it was too seized up, so you'll see the way we got around that shortly. But anyway, now we're just washing off all the items that have come out. We just used normal soap, soapy water. That's enough to wash them down and a microfiber towel to clean everything and dry, dry it afterwards and maybe an airline here and there. So we have noticed in the recent weeks, we've had quite a few repeat commenters in the comments section. So if you are one of those people who, who you know follow us weekly and comment on a few of the videos, we do notice and we appreciate that you're here. We get an awful lot of satisfaction out of the comments. Uh, they're always interesting, good, bad or ugly. We, we always chuckle and enjoy the comments and you know we try to reply to you where we can. But even that, as the channel's growing, we're finding that we're doing more and more of the commenting and it's you know almost becoming like a half a day's work in itself to keep up with all that. But we do appreciate it, even if we don't reply to yours. Thanks for being here. We're now just cleaning up this jockey wheels. These were actually a, a very tired, as was the derailleur really. A 10 speed now Altegra is no longer 10 speed. So, you know, it's a case of finding new old stock or going to a, a lower base model. But at the moment, this is serviceable. It'll get him through his winter miles into the spring. Just by doing this service, it, you can make a big difference to your bikes. So we're just greasing up those bearings that we've cleaned out. And rebuilding those little jockey wheels so they've got fresh grease in there now which means that they will you can see the before and after here of, of before and after being cleaned up the what difference it makes and like I say we, we couldn't get this apart so there's a, a little service hole there so I used a spray oil to really penetrate that hinged section on the modern derailleurs there's actually now just a, literally a peg and a screw in peg that you can undo and you can get that cage right off quite easily really in comparison with these you know the future systems are you can see that's been an improvement that Shimano have made on the later generations of derailleurs but we're now just rebuilding this we use a little bit of Loctite on the jockey wheel pivots themselves and get that back together and lubricate up the front derailleur a little bit of grease on the springs same with this brake squirt oil to really get in that what was originally sticky pivot point and get that nice and lubricated and we just use there a little bit of grease on the spring itself, silicone grease, which we'll also use again shortly. This is a very common point that gets stuck. The front brake is always a job to get off. This is a good example of why you should regularly have your bike serviced. I had an awful job getting these spacers off of this steerer tube here. You, you know, it was very, very sticky, which again, if it had been serviced previously, or rather by having it serviced regularly, 
you can save them problems in the future. We had the sticky headset bearings and everything here was all quite corroded up really on this front end of this bike. You can see this bearing here, you know, you don't even need to feel that to see it's worn out. So the bearings on the right are ours. These are stainless steel, stainless steel cages, stainless steel races and stainless steel balls. You can see the difference in the quality of those bearings from hardened steel that was originally on this bike to our stainless steel bearings. Worlds apart in quality and worlds apart in longevity. So we clean everything up before we rebuild it. Get these little spaces all cleaned up because obviously they were corroded onto the bike. So they need you know a good clean up to make sure they'll go on and off smoothly. Which is sort of, you know, we just work our way through the job, cleaning everything up. The cleaning part is very important. You can see here we've got aluminium cups that are pressed into, like built into the bike. So we put a little bit of copper slip on those. Then we put the bearings in, which again will help release the bearings in the future when we come to replacing them many thousands of miles down the line. That's all gone back together. Now this is the, the silicon clear grease. I just used that on the inside of this initial spacer because that actually has a little rubber seal in it to hold it onto the frame. But then I also use a degreaser here on the steerer tube to get any excess of that off because we don't want grease under this stem. So it's just working our way through. Line up the logo on the cap there. A little bit of copper slip on this bolt. This one I always douse in copper slip because it helps when stripping the bike down in the future. And you can see now the headset bearings are lovely and flowy there. So wash the bike down. We always do this when we service the bike. I mean, you know, you don't want to have spent a load of money getting a bike serviced, getting it back to, to spec, and then have to wash it yourself. You know, I want you to be able to have a bike speed service, jump on your bike and enjoy it again. So that's what we're doing here. We just clean everything up. And you, you know, it's sort of very, very important to keep your bike as clean and nice as you can. And it just makes the future proofing of it a little bit better. Now I'll go around the, the tire here. I'm using magnifying glasses to see if there's any debris. You get tiny little bits of, of debris in the tire and you can pick those out with a screwdriver before they run through the tire so that you know you're not going to get future puncture from anything that's in there. And then I ran round, my hand round the inside of the tire to make sure there was nothing in it. And I was happy that that tire was ready to go back on the bike. Next up we wax the chain. So that's been in our molten chain wax. And we now let that hang to cool down before breaking it down. Now the wax has gone inside the rollers because it's like a liquid so it goes into the rollers. And then we use the molten speed powder on the cassette and the chain itself just to give it that final finish. I was intrigued by a comment we had last week and somebody who sort of was saying that wax will still pick up the dirt. It doesn't the same as oil. It's completely different. A, a proper molten wax is completely different to a wax that you put on the chain from a pot. It's just a completely different entity. And this does secure your bike from getting too dirty and it is a much nicer way of running your bike. And then we just give everything a, a service, including a skewer like this. It's Two, two oils and a, uh, sorry, an oil and two greases on there before that goes back on, and then we're rebuilding the chain set. I didn't actually remove the chain set itself from the bottom bracket because I didn't want to disturb that bottom bracket, so I removed the chain rings and cleaned those individually to the chain set so the chain set stayed on the bike. And then everything now we're starting to rebuild. We actually fitted a new front derailleur cable, but the rest of the cables we were able to reuse on this bike. So we're getting it all back together now and like I say the cables were actually fine and because this is an external routed bike we were able to put it all back together nicely with what was originally there and you can see what difference in that derailleur. Getting this brake which is now operating as it should back on the bike and it's yeah it's always intriguing when I watch these videos I always enjoy this playback when I do the voiceover because you can really see what a difference you've made especially on the before and after shots at the end. That brake now you can see is, is now working and operating as it should and it's now releasing nicely so you can see it's working perfectly. And then we get everything back on. We begin out once we've sort of rebuilt the bike, so this is sort of the process of clean and rebuild. Once we've rebuilt the bike, index the gears, then at this point we begin to go through the bike entirely front to back. We always give a service sheet with all the bikes that we service and we talk everything up to manufacturer specification as you can see we're doing here, literally every nut and bolt on that bike will be checked over 
and I, you know, I don't miss any. Every single nut and bolt on a bike when I do a service, it's checked. And you can see here, you know, e even the brake box themselves, I check every single bolt, and they're all done to manufacturer specification. I write all those down on the service sheet that I give you. It makes a vast difference to a bike to know that you can confidently get on that bike and that it has been checked over 100%. There's no margin of error on a bike speed service, and that's what you should always be looking for, even if you're servicing your own bikes, is to check everything. Make sure that bike is ready to ride thousands of miles. And now we just pump up those tires, especially this back one, because obviously we've had that inner tube out. As you can see from these before and afters, it always astounds me what a difference we make to these bikes sometimes. You know, I do them day in, day out, and I don't notice. But when I see these shots, I do realize just quite what we do to these bikes sometimes. It's quite amazing, really. This bike is now ready to roll again. So thanks for watching. You'll see here momentarily that brake and what a difference we made to that. Yeah, you'll be quite surprised. You know, it's uh, you would get back on this bike and it would just flow. It would be easy to ride. Everything would be working. And you'll see now this brake, how what a difference we made. So that was before sticking. And now you can see that's operating perfectly, releasing as it should. So thanks for watching.